And again, we're just sticking to whole numbers. You know, I knew this guy that um, he was a, a crop breeder, and what he did was he bred different types of fruit and, and made small crops. And if they were really, really good fruit, then they'd sell the trees to other people. Um, I don't remember what his name was. I think it was Bradford, Bradford Farms or something. And they have the record for like the sweetest peach ever or something like this. this was years ago. Uh, but what he did was, was that. He, he would breed some fruit and make some special trees and maybe five or ten trees for each orchard. Then he, he, you don't want to make a whole orchard of crappy fruit, right? Do you want to do that? No, you want to make a small orchard and then if it's good, then you start making more trees. You get the idea, right? So what he did, he had eight orchards, each orchard had five trees. How many trees total are there if there's eight orchards and each one of them has five trees? You know there's a couple ways we can do that. If you have eight orchards and each one of them has five trees, couldn't you just do, there's five trees here, and there's five trees here, and there's an orchard with five trees. Could you add them all up? Would you get 40? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's really quite annoying to do, isn't it? So instead of doing five plus five plus five eight times, notice the word I'm using, eight times, that's where we get that word. Repeated addition is also considered multiplication. That's where we get it from. If you're adding the same number over and over and over again, we get multiplication out of this. So option one, not, not so great, I mean, you could do it give you the right answer. Or we could do multiplication. Again, how we get multiplication is simply repeated addition of the same number. Spell repeat. And we have a way to represent that. Instead of doing the 5 plus 5, we typically see it. How, how would I write this another way instead of 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5? How do I write it? 8 five times to 5. Four. Okay, we five have an 8 because eight. there's 8 orchards. And then five. how do I write times 5? X. Five. Okay, I could use a little X. We could do that. That's 8 times 5, right? Correct. Sure. Now, we are going to get away from the x after a while because if you know anything about variables, which maybe you do at this point, we haven't introduced in this class, but variables are oftentimes x. So we have another way of writing this as well. We can also do a, what's the, what's the thing we can put in place of like a dot? Yeah, it's a dot. It's not a decimal. It's a dot in between it. 8 times 5 means the same thing. There's also a couple other ways. Do you know them? The what now? Oh, um, no, that, that would be for division. That's a great call. That's a good idea. Exponents would be repeated multiplication. You're, you guys are on the right track. Go ahead. We can do 8 times 5 like this. We're going to get away from this one. We can do 8 times 5 like this. We can do 8 times 5. Have you ever seen that before? Yes. That right there is implied multiplication. Whenever you have a number next to a parenthesis like this, it says, this number is getting multiplied by whatever is in there. Make sure you know that, because this <laughs> is going to happen a lot in this class. Like this, or we could even have two sets of parentheses next to each other. That also means multiplication. So all three of those are things we'll be seeing over and over again. By the way, how much is 8 times 5? 40. Just like we had for addition and subtraction, we have a couple words for multiplication. These little parts up here. The 8 and the 5, fun little words we'll be saying a lot, factors. 8 times 5, those, the 8 and the 5 are called factors, the things you're multiplying together to get this answer. And the answer, what we get after we multiply, do you know what it is? And addition was a sum. Subtraction was a difference. Multiplication would give us a, do you know it? 
You've heard it before, I know you have. Product. Say it. Yeah, say it louder. Product. Yeah, you both said it. Product, exactly right. So if you're asked to find the product, what it means is you're supposed to multiply. <clears throat> Before we get into some actual examples, I'd like to talk about some properties of multiplication with you. And hopefully I'm going to draw some conclusions that are kind of interesting, and you're, we're going to compare these to some other operations we've already done. First one's this. <clears throat> if I multiply 0 times any number, for instance, 0 times 1, how much am I going to get if I multiply 0 times 1? Zero. Zero. Okay. What happens if I multiply 0, sorry, um, do it the other way, like 1 times 0. Does it make a difference? Zero. Oh, it's still 0. This is called the property of 0 for multiplication. If you multiply 0 by anything, you're going to get 0. Or anything by 0, you're going to get 0. The property of 0. How about this one? What if you multiply a number by 1? In either way, 1 times 8 or 8 times 1. What's that going to give you? Eight. Does it matter that it's 8 or any time I multiply by 1, am I going to get that number back? Yes. That's an identity right there. I always get the same thing back. So here I get 8, here I get 8. This is the property of 1 for multiplication. This is a good one. Does it matter if you multiply 5 times 7 or 7 times 5? No. Are you going to get different answers there? No. no. Are you starting to see similarities between this operation and one other one we've done before? No. Think about it as we're writing this down. Did subtraction do this? Was subtraction the same if I reversed them? No. Was addition the same if I reversed them? They're both what we call commutative. <laughs> There's two more. The second one is this. If I take, remember those parentheses? What do those parentheses mean again? Great. So if I have 2 times 3 times 5, or 2 times 3 times 5, and I group them here, or I group them here. Remember, these, I don't even actually need that dot. It's implied that I'm multiplying, and it's implied that I'm multiplying. Am I going to get two different answers for these? What do you think? Yeah. Do them in your head if you think so. Let's take 10 seconds. Do them in your head. Do this part first, then do that. Then do this part first, then do that. So we'll speak to you. I don't know. You tell me. Either way you go? Yeah. Six times five? Right? Fifteen times two? So either way we're getting thirty out of this. Do you remember that addition did the same thing? Addition, it didn't matter how I grouped them or associated them. That was the associated property. We have that here too. You're going to find that a lot of these properties are similar to addition. Why is that? Someone take a guess as to why multiplication is so similar to addition. Because it's repeated addition. That's exactly right. We're just repeating these properties over and over again. That gives us the properties for multiplication. Since multiplication is repeated addition, a lot of the properties carry over. Now there's one more that we haven't talked about in addition because it doesn't happen in addition that I do need to discuss here with you briefly. You're going to be using this property a lot. Kind of a cool one, actually. Okay. 
And it happens here when I have a number outside of some parentheses and then some expression of, of two or more terms inside. So we're having two outside, I'm multiplying it by three plus four. Now there's two options we have to do this problem. We are most likely going to use the order of operations way to do this, but I want to show you right now that there is a different option. Uh, this will help us out a lot when we get into variables. This is called the distributive property. What the distributive property says is this. I can take my two, and because this is being, what's this operation between here again? Multiplication. Because it's multiplication, I can multiply the two times the three, and the two times the four, and then add them. That's the distributive property. It's kind of cool, I'll show you what I mean. This is the same thing as two times three. Notice how the two is being multiplied by the three, plus, because we have a plus, two times four. The two gets multiplied by the first and the second number, and we're still adding them together. Let's see if this actually works, okay? How much do we get out of this one? Six. Plus eight. eight. How much is that? Four. Eight. Now let's do it the other way we, we should know how to do already. This way. We would do two times, what's the three plus the four? Seven. seven. How much is two times seven? Fourteen. Looks to me like they're the same thing. So distribution does work exactly the same as if you were to go through order of operations. That distribution is something we're not going to use a whole lot now, but later on we're going to be using it all the time when we get into variables. How many people understood what we talked about the properties so far? Feel okay about those? Good, all right. All right. <coughs> By the way, you do need to memorize your multiplication table. You know the multiplication table that says like, Nine times six, and you go, ah. You have to think about it and use the whole nine method. You've seen the nine method, by the way, haven't you? Yeah. The nine times six. Oh, I love that. It's so cool. You do nine times six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The answer is 54. Have you ever seen that before? You've never seen that? Oh, yes. You do, you do nine times nine times one. Let's do nine times one. Nine. Nine times three. That one's hard for me. 27. 27. You see that? So you have your nines down at least. Nine times eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got 70. Uh -oh. Two. Two. 72. Isn't that kind of neat? You, do, you can do your nines that way. But you need to memorize all your multiplication tables. Some single digits, they have to be memorized. It's, it's really important for us because we do have a method for large numbers. But if you don't know how to multiply like six times three, and it's taking a long time to think about that, it's going to slow you down. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you use a multiplication. Oh, we're, we're almost done, huh? Let you use a multiplication table on your tests. Uh, I'll hand them out before class if you if you need them. But I'd like you to start memorizing those things. Okay, we're going to end there for today.